Hey everybody, as most of you know, our finale, USAC finale at uh, Red Dirt Raceway Meeker, Oklahoma got rained out. So our season is finished. I uh, thought I'd take this time getting the shop cleaned up, already starting our preparations for 2024. Try to get that USAC championship next year. Congratulations to Justin Grant for this year's uh, championship. But uh, before the season started, we had a little more time to do some tech videos. Everyone really liked them. So um, the drive line of a sprint car is something that uh, most people ask about how does it go how does it stop you know how does it work why do you have to get pushed off so i thought i'd take a take a minute make a little video show you guys kind of a little bit of the simplified way of how a sprint car um, drive line works which is actually pretty simple so this is our motor plate which is bolted onto the frame this our motor would be up here this would be a universal joint u joint uh, this is an aluminum dmi 32 spline U joint that is bolted right to the crank of the motor. So when the motor is turning over, this is spinning. This would be up inside here, inside the car. This would be what we call the torque ball housing. This is the torque ball. This spins free in here. This kind of helps everything transfer through the torque tube. All the power from the engine transfers to the torque tube to the rear end, bolts to the rear end right here. Inside the torque tube, which our legs are right here, this goes right between our legs, would be the drive shaft. This drive shaft goes right, right into the U-joint and straight into the rear end. So as long as the motor is turning over, U-joint's turning, drive shaft's turning, it's turning what we call the lower shaft in the rear end. Well, how do you stop? How do you go? I get that question a lot um, from even, uh, not even casual fans, but this is our shifter that's inside our car. This would be up around right here, um, easily reached by our right hand. And to take it out of here, you pull it up. There's a lever on here that moves. This cable is connected to that. It moves a shifter linkage on the inside. Put it in gear, take it out of gear. When it's out of gear, the engine can still run. The drive shaft's still spinning. The lower shaft's still spinning, but it disengages in here. So then it's not turning the gears and it's not turning the ring and pinion, it's not turning the axle. We'll get into that more uh, detailed. I'll have a rear end apart. I want to do a video, show you guys kind of the inside of a spring car rear end and it's similar to the rear end in your car. But there is no transmission, there's no clutch. Uh, we put it in gear. So when this turns, it turns the drive shaft, which turns the motor over. That's how we start it. Your car has a starter with a battery and a starter that turns it over. We use the truck behind us to push us, turn the axle, turn the drive shaft, and it turns the motor over. We flip the switch. Once the motor's running, we can take it out and the motor stays running, but we can't put it back in. So uh, that's why you see everyone pulling their pits, they warm their car up, and then they shut it off. There are two main types of drive shafts. The one I showed you here, would what would we call an internal 1010. So there's 10 splines on this drive shaft. This is the U-joint that goes right into the rear end. This goes straight in there, and there's not very much movement. This is the style that I run on my non-wing sprint cars. This is the style. This would be called a swivel ball style drive shaft. As you can see, that's got kind of a ball shape on the end of it. This would go in to here. I didn't take my um, snap ring out. I'm gonna do that real quick. See, Sienna can entertain you while I go grab my snap ring flyer. Now we're ready. This goes in this ball, and as you can see, that has a lot more movement than a standard drive shaft. This is a seal. We we'll pack this full of grease, pack this full of grease, put this in there so it's all nice and lubricated. Push this seal in, snap that snap ring in there. It all stays nice and greased all the time, and then it moves um, to help uh, keep some of the bind out of the, the drive shaft. There's a lot of torque and stuff, especially on a wing sprint car, you have that wing pushing down. So uh, without this, the this coupler would get, it gets really hot and you have to replace the parts a lot quicker. This kind of helps the car float through the corner a little better, 
with a wing. <laughs> As you can see, this is not a Hollywood studio. We uh, make mistakes. Now we have a child uh, yelling for us in the background. What do you want, Lindley? You wanna come get in this video? No. <laughs> Too bad, get over here. Come here and help Dad. Come here and help me real quick. It's your special day. You're the only one here. Lindley's not in school today. The other two are in school. She had preschool uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So today's Thursday, so she has her mommy um, daughter day and they came to see me at the shop today so but that's basically the differences like with most non-wing cars run this style most wing style one wing cars run this style they could be interchanged it works that turns that that turns that doesn't really matter it's just a combination of what the the teams have in their car but um, get a lot of questions about this so hopefully this simplifies it for you if you got any other questions leave them in the comments if you have any other ideas of topics you would like to see me talk about uh, leave them in the comments below hope this helps everybody understand sprint car a little bit better